Hi everyone, my name is Andrei Vojtash and I'm the creative director and founder of Poetic Studio. Today here with me is Martin Kolasar, our community manager. Hi everyone. I'm really excited to present to you a sh short demonstration of our new game Sacred Fire. Sacred Fire is a psychological role-playing game where your heart hides all the monsters. I hope today's presentation uh, will show you the kind of role-playing experience Sacred Fire offers. But let's start from the beginning. So this is our first scene. It's a scene from the Sacred Fire's prologue. You just discovered that the missing girl you've been tracking was kidnapped by a group of Roman soldiers. Now you have a choice to make. Each choice has a probability check assigned to it, so you are always informed. You can mouse over the risk chain and it will show a preview of probability checks of events that will follow. Okay, let's say we try to save the girl. So in this scene you need to pass a single attack check in order to get around the Romans and make your way towards the girl. To improve the odds we can spend willpower to make an extra effort. In the second scene we have to both attack and dodge. So we uh, succeeded in the attack but failed to dodge. Two of them have blindsided us. This is not going to end well. So we were defeated. Uh, yeah, attacking a group of Romans alone was not a good choice. So let's go back and see what would have had happened if we chose to go help. So this is Do Not, uh, the fort, um, the hub of the game that complements the core game loop. After making story choices and fighting battles, you return here. You can uh, gain resources and renown and use them to in increase your political influence and also uh, deal with trauma and uh, develop your inner strength. You can, you can meet all the companion characters and remove relationship states like envy, hate or prejudice that you gained earlier in the game. Yeah, the thing is you don't start as a leader in Sacred Fire. You have to compete with all the other story characters as they evolve. And if you want to really change the story and make the important uh, main decisions, you need to lead and you need to win this influence. Your history with a character has an influence on your interactions with the character. Now you have to swallow your pride and ask Morgan for help. This is the throne room, uh, and while you succeeded in the last check, you will need to overcome a few more obstacles. The first one is getting noticed. All right, this is my favorite choice. Uh, so smashing an axe in political debates is a lot of fun, but it will have consequences. Each of the characters in the scene will react differently. Some will admire you and respect you, others will be annoyed, especially uh, Niall, the guy talking. So. Uh, you found the confidence to smash the axe and got everyone's attention. And the evil eye from Neil. Now it's your turn to present your plea to Morgan. You can choose two motives uh, to appeal to. This is a theme that runs through many choices in Sacred Fire and it builds up to branching of the main storyline between revenge and building a better world. Let's appeal to the motive most characters are aligned with. So you succeeded and you gained help in the mission to save the girl with the motive of revenge. You can see that this evokes a reaction in all the companions. Prior to going to battle, uh, you can prepare. Our character has leveled up, so we can improve his chances in combat. He is a proficient warrior, so we will improve his control over fear and anger. We do this by boosting his ideals. The downside is this will make him more prone to being manipulated and stricken with guilt. We're now back in a similar situation, but we have our companion with us. The mission objective will impact both the girl's chances of survival and Roman's ch chances of escaping. If he escapes, it will lead to retribution. As the risk chain preview suggests, each companion will run a loyalty check and based on that he will either follow through 
and follow your, your lead or abandon you. You can again choose a motive of revenge or loyalty. Uh, so now Morgan passed the loyalty check. Eaton follows the objective too and she takes down another Roman. In this screen we fail to dodge and get hit and Neil ignores our mission objective and he doesn't show up. Luckily for us, Ethan jumps in and she manages to draw the attention of the Roman. Yeah, smashing the backs uh, while Niall was speaking wasn't such a great idea. Neil is cl clearly pissed off, uh, but the relationships in Sacred Fire are complex. There will be plenty of opportunities to fix uh, and mend the relationship or escalate the conflict. Uh, for now, this uh, scene completes the risk chain successfully. Now the game shows what's going on with the prisoners. The scenes unfold based on the relationships between the NPCs. The prisoner's unusual courage and pain resistance wins him respect. The girl remains unprotected. Claire follows through on your objective. She protects the child even if she puts herself in danger. So while this scene looks like a classic setup to force you into choosing between saving one of the two characters, the opposite is true. We never mislead the player into wrong choice. And if such an outcome would be coming, we would have let you know and give you a choice to prevent it at the cost. So now we, we use this to introduce a new character that is key to the story. And as he saves Claire's life, she is now grateful and impressed by his skill and it complicates relationships with feelings of rivalry and romance between the three of you. The situation now presents a different choice though. If the messenger goes away, Ron will know you attacked and will send reinforcements. But this will make the following battles tougher. If you do not stop the centurion, the injured prisoner will probably die. You succeeded in stopping the centurion. Now that you have the centurion's attention, you enter regular turn-based combat mode. The default and basic mode is the most efficient way, uh, but you can choose to make a risky move to gain extra renown, or you can choose uh, to intimidate or provoke the opponent. So we were successful and provoked him. His anger rose and so his guard dropped a bit and our attack chances improved. As you can see, uh, opportunity matter is charging up. It will allow you to do special moves and trigger uh, narrative events inside the combat. Now we hit the Centurion in a sensitive spot and he got angry even more. So now he attacks. Because he is angry, he does a bit more strength but less precision. You dodge again. Uh, but the Centurion's special opportunity is filled and he uses it to refocus and calm down. But still, you gain renown for getting under his skin. Now it's your turn again, but you choose to skip an attack and wait for his move. This allows your own opportunity to charge past the 100% mark. The one thing you can do with the charge opportunity is to save it up. It will allow you, in case you are defeated, one last chance to stand up and fight. And this is exactly what we are going to do as we are low on health. So you dodge and counter attack and you miss. The Centurion gets lucky and lands a critical hit. You are down, but the saved up opportunity charge kicks in and now you have your last chance to master the will to keep fighting. Uh, you have to choose a source from where you draw this inner strength. This is a fundamental decision as it is, it's a near-death experience and it will shape your personality profoundly. So we managed to remain conscious. It's a tough situation, so what are we going to do now? We managed to secretly draw a blade and dodge the final blow. Now we have an opening to strike. You win renown with your people, uh, but Rome will seek retribution for a slain officer. If you had chosen to let him live, he would have continued to fight the Roman army and follow orders. But as the story progresses and the conflict evolves, he could have helped tipping the scale towards uh, Rome being open towards peace negotiations. But that will have to wait. The ground shakes as horns of the Roman legion sound. The messenger that got away called for reinforcements faster than you thought. You will have many options how to improve your chances before a big battle. 
but this is where our today's presentation ends. I hope this taste of a new role-playing experience is something you like. Please uh, check out our Kickstarter campaign. We have some amazing rewards lined up for you. Some of them involve Duck Coco, the voice of the Witcher. Thank you. Thank you.